about sassafras now. So here's sassafras right here, right here. So um, many of you may know this is a really easy plant to identify because it will have leaves with three different shapes all in the same plant. Leaves with no thumbs, one thumb, and two thumbs. So here's what a two thumb leaf looks like. Here's a one thumb leaf. And then here's a no thumb leaf all in the same plant. So, but this is another scratch and sniff plant. Mm -hmm. And so it has two different smells. Oh, yeah. There's a smell down here at the bottom. That will be a familiar smell. <coughs> okay, so smell there. And then smell up here. Two different smells. I'll just separate these. So you guys can be the upper people. <laughs> and you guys can be the lower people. All right, then. Okay. All right, so give that a sniff where I scraped off. Okay, so um, this is sassafras, so I'll just uh, keep holding this one up as a drink. Drink it where it's open. So um, this plant can be very, very common in southern New England, especially near the coast. And this is a plant that was uh, encountered by the earliest European explorers to the New World, like the Sir Walter Raleigh types uh, back in the 16th century. And they got very excited about it. They had never seen anything like this before. And so they, they brought it back to Europe and they presented it with a lot of fanfare in the royal courts of Europe as a way of justifying the enormous sums the monarchs were shelling out to support these expeditions. They'd say, look, we found sassafras. And so, uh, um, so sassafras was uh, uh, very popular in Europe. And anyway, so in fact, <laughs> Uh, you may know the story, but in case you don't, there's a guy named Bartholomew Gosnold. He is the person who named Martha's Vineyard, Martha's Vineyard. And he discovered the island of Martha's Vineyard in 1602 when he was on a trip here to gather sassafras and take it back to Europe. That's why he was here. So anyway, so this plant has two smells, which you're experiencing now. So the smell in the root, that's a familiar root beer smell. And yes, sassafras was used for making, the, it was a major flavor ingredient in root beer and many other things for many, many years. And the flavor is on the outside, it's in the root bark, so it's on the outer part of the root. Okay, you getting the smell? Getting the root beer smell? Okay. So, um, uh, about 40 or so years ago, the Food and Drug Administration uh, did a test, and they were testing a synthetic form of the chemical saffron, which is the essential oil that's in the sassafras root that's responsible for the smell. And they felt fed a huge amount of the synthetic saffron to rats, and some of them got cancer. And so they banned uh, any saffron products in the, out of the food supply. Uh, but. Um, uh, but all that study proved is that uh, a huge amount of synthetic saffron is carcinogenic to rats. <laughs> I'm not aware of any studies that shows that natural sassafras is carcinogenic to people. So I think that's yet to be proved. Well, I'll tell my son that because he forbid me to pick anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So, and you know, saffron is present in conventional, conventional spices like cinnamon and nutmeg although in smaller amounts than sassafras, but they haven't banned cinnamon or nutmeg. So a cynical person might say that the sassafras lobby wasn't strong enough to fight off the government regulators, you know, back when they banned it. But anyway, but in the, in the interest of full disclosure, I'll tell you, the Food and Drug Administration thinks that saffron in the sassafras root is carcinogenic. And so you might say, well, you know, I don't need to eat that. I'll just avoid it, just in case there is something to that. Maybe the rats got some prior things that they Trying on it. Uh, we get the artificial version. Yeah, that's not right, fair. right. So anyway. Well, safrol is actually one of the main ingredients for uh, MDMA. Right. That's, right. So that's the reason I suspect they banned it. Oh, is that it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway. So, um, for what? so to make sassafras tea, you just peel that bark off the root, or you, if you want, you just throw the root in the water and simmer it for a while, and the water return this coppery color. And uh, then you can drink the tea, hot or cold, sweetened or unsweetened. I think it's good just plain. Some yeah. people like to add cream or sugar, but I think it's fine just the way it is. And uh, you can usually reuse the root of the root peeling several times before they lose their potency. 
Another good way to use it is to make uh, sassafras candy from it, and I have a recipe for that in my Ooh. book. It's like the root beer barrels you used to buy at the penny candy oh, store, no way. only the flavor is much better because it has little bits of root bark embedded in the candy, oh my God. so it's, it's really good. Right. So, the upper part of the plant, what did that smell like to people? Not as Fruit Loops, very good. Yes, I had I had a woman in one of my walks a few years back that said to her it smelled just like Fruit Loops cereal, and I think the resemblance, you know, if anybody wants to admit, they know what Fruit Loops smells like. You give it a shot. Oh wow, yeah. Yeah. Right. Of course, it's right. Right. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a complete coincidence. They're not using the sassafras to flavor Fruit Loops. Okay. I think we got here. So with the root, can you dry the fish? Yeah, right. Uh, I freeze it. That's how I store it. You do what? Yeah. The root? I peel the bark off and oh, then yeah. freeze the bark. Peel the bark, freeze the bark, and save the bark. Yeah. The bark. yeah. yeah. I dry them. Okay. Yep, they work very well. All right. So, um, Is there anything you do all right. with the fruit loop part? I will get to that. Oh. All right. So, um, <laughs> that flavor that you were smelling in the upper bark, the green twigs on this plant, that same flavor is in the young leaves of sassafras, and the young leaves are used to make filet powder. That's what filet powder oh, is, dried yeah, powdered yeah, sassafras yeah, leaves. Indeed, yes, you're right. right. You and so you can make your own, and so the best time to gather the leaves to make that is in the spring when the leaves are small and tender. So, you know, uh, so leaves like this, but just when they're about an inch long, just coming out. Yeah. And then gather them and spread them out in a cookie sheet and just allow them to dry. And then pulverize them and sift out any fibers and then take that powder and put it into a salt or pepper type shaker. And then just add it to your food near the end to flavor and thicken it. Okay? Nice. Filet powder, it's powder, it's a flavor and thickener. It's used a lot in gumbo, for example. Right. Do you get fruit loop taste out of it? No. 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 It's a nice, it's a nice flavor. Yeah. I mean, it's used a lot. In, in yeah. All right. So. So um, it's the bark that you would use to make the flavor, or the inner, inner, inner part of the. To make the filet powder using the young leaves, the dried young leaves. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. So uh, we got sassafras. Yeah. All right.